It's the Beat Break Morning Show with Sean Garvey and the crew. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Architect here, Sean Garvey from the Beat Break Morning Show. Good morning, DJ Rollo, Sharia Thomas, and Diamond Love. We are the Beat Break Morning Show. Get at us on all your social media at Beat Break Radio. I hope you all enjoyed your Memorial Day weekend, all right? But as far as me, I am going to take a little r and R. I am going to be on vacation. But while I'm on vacation, I want you all to enjoy these three beautiful voices that you are going to hear momentarily. It is the intern takeover right here on the Beat Break Morning Show. We got three ladies who um, graciously enough decided that they want to uh, do a podcast, a quick podcast, just give you all their thoughts and views on some different things happening in social media and entertainment and everything in between. All right, so I will be back on the Beat Break Morning Show next week. And don't forget, folks, we are looking for a new morning show co-host as well as a new morning news reporter. We are still taking your inquiries. BeatBreakRadio at gmail.com is the email address to send your submission. So if you have what it takes, I want you all to email us, BeatBreakRadio at gmail.com. You only got a few days left to send your inquiries in, so make sure you do that ASAP, all right? I will be back on vacation next week. Enjoy the special edition of the Beat Break Morning Show, the intern takeover. And to let you know what the takeover, the intern takeover title is, we're going to call it the Pink Table Talk. It's kind of like the remix to the Red Table Talk. Shout out to Jada Pika Smith. But this is the Pink Table Talk, and they are going to let you all know what they are about in just a few moments. All right, so enjoy it. And make sure you follow me on all your social media at Sean Garvey on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram at Sean Garvey ATL. It's the Beat Break Morning Show. Wake your ass up. What's up? It's your girl, Nala J. What's up? And it's your girl, DJ. And it's your girl, Queen Day. And you are now tuned in to Pink, Pink Table, Table Talk. Talk. All right, so what we got on the list today, DJ? What's going on? What's going on? What's popping? Okay, so today on Pink Table Talk, I want to talk about how men try to downplay their girl. Like, say if their girl is taking care of them, they try to downplay them. Like, not so giving sad. you credit or something like that. Like, it's okay for a black woman to raise you, like, you know, help you, you know, Okay, now. Raise you up jealous. Like this. No, That's no, jealousy. No. I know. I think it's it's jealousy. a pride thing. I get it, though. I, I know it's I a pride thing. If I was a man, thing. I would not want to be like, yeah, my girl taking care of me. Come on now. I mean, that's so, embarrassing. He ain't going to tell his dudes that. Right. Well, well not, not in necessarily take. Oh, okay, let me take it back. Not necessarily taking care of him, but, like, as far as uh, helping me elevate in life. Like, I didn't Mom, know. Yeah. I didn't know how to, you know, go about making business deals. She oh, helped okay. me do that stuff like that yeah, instead of yeah. giving women the props for that because it's something that you didn't know. It's something that you didn't learn from somebody that you knew, an older guy or something like that. What they say, that OGs or something, something that they didn't teach them that we could, right. that their parents didn't teach them. I actually have a friend like that. She, uh, this guy that she was dating, he didn't even finish high school. Mm -hmm. She got him to finish, like, to get his GED or whatever. He's now doing, like, community college or whatever, but he's living with her in a different state. I, you know, as a friend, from a friend point of view, I feel like she could do better, and I was like, don't waste your time. But at the same time, I commend her because, you know, she she's building, him, yeah, yeah, and she right. is, she's so building him up. He didn't have that type of support system where he was, so definitely she's doing a lot for him. Mm -hmm. But being that, you know, she just graduated college herself, I just feel like that's it's just too lie. much for her. Well, you, I mean, you know so what they say, right? Like, she basically. Yeah, uh, you know what they say, just like power. Sometimes they don't end up, <laughs> then they get up, then they start cheating on you. Like, exactly. I made you. Right. You wasn't there. So from a, friend, <laughs> from a friend's standpoint, being totally honest, do you feel like he's the type to get on and forget her? I do. I, mm. so I do. I know. Girl, I you better be honest, honest with your friend. You need to be honest with your friend. friend. She knows it. He didn't cheat on her before all of this started. So she, it's, it's not. And she still kind of like, I see that's something that's in so you. I feel, like, I feel like, yes, as a friend, I will tell you my opinion. But at the same time, that's your relationship. I'm going to let you do you. Right. Because I would want to stay in your lane. Exactly. I would, stay want, in your right. lane. I would want the same mm. in mind. At the same time, you know, we dealing with our stuff. Say what you got to say about it. Let me know how you feel. But at the end of the day, I made my own decisions. Right. So just right, right, right. Support me. <laughs> 
So speaking of staying in your lane, when is it? When is it a no in your head, like a self no, like don't say that, or you need to say mm. that, or if it was me, I would want her to say that. Like, what what is a yes and a no? Like, what do you? What is a set standard for yourself? Really, if you have to stop. think about what you want to say to them and you question it, if you're questioning something <laughs> nine times out of ten, you shouldn't be saying, you be saying it. Nope. Yeah, normally nope. whenever that does happen, I just don't say anything at all. Mm-hmm. I just let her talk. But um, there was at one point, I think it was her graduation. He didn't come or anything like that. Yeah, he didn't show her up. college graduation? Yes, he did not show up. Oh, see. He didn't, he didn't text her, no nothing. Oh. Like, And we're talking about it, and she was like, I'm about to send him pictures from the graduation. I'm like, he should have been here. Why are you sending him pictures? That's what I said. That's what I said. We know at graduation date a whole year before, no excuses. And that's what I said. Was he at work? No. He did not have a job to be at work. <laughs> so you just didn't show up. He just did not show up. So, so she he could find, he didn't have a car or anything like that, but he could find it's his easy. way. Exactly. He could Uber. find his way different places, Bus. but did not find Walk. his way to her graduation. That's, that would have been a red so flag for I, me. So I, as a yeah, friend, I, I mean, agree. she was talking about sending him pictures and stuff. It triggered me because I'm like, yo, this is not okay. That's what you know it's really your friend, though. You only get right. upset when you know it's a friend. That's a real friend. Because yeah, he over here, you like, send me pictures for real. Like, oh, I want to see. Like, no, you should have been here in the pictures, taking right. pictures with her. Like, that don't make no sense. That's yep. a red flag. And that so was, I, you know, I spoke my mind or whatever, but she was just like, I always, yeah, she was just like, I always talk down on him and just let her do her. So I was like, you know what? she it. doesn't see. She yeah. it's gonna take for her to get yep. tired. You can't. You gotta mm-hmm. love it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't be surprised you get that call in a few years. Like, girl, I left him for dead. <laughs> because you be like, girl, I know it took you some time, but I'm just glad you see. As long like, as long as you did it, you went on that journey and you mm-hmm. figured it out. Yeah. And mm-hmm. Sometimes some people just can't it take, help. Yep. It, it takes them to go through it. Yeah. She's right. It takes them to go through it themselves. There's a lot of people like that. And then as black women, we always feel like our friends talking down half of the time. Yeah. Our friends don't be talking down. We be spitting tr- facts. Yeah. Like, yeah. your man ain't not I bad. battle that all the time, though. Like, because I still deal with my ex a little bit. And I just feel like a lot of my close friends, especially like my family, they... They're, they're not really, fun to him. No, they are, but they aren't. It's like they are yeah. because it's really about like, him yeah, and it's pros and cons. Yeah, it's so it's like speech. I try, I try to hear them out, but at the same time, like a big part of me just be like, yo, like just let me see what's mm-hmm. going on. But at the same time, I don't want to be that person. So I'm like, all right, I'm trying you to try to listen, I'm get trying the to feedback, listen, so yeah. Yeah. but it's hard. It's yeah. so hard to decipher like what I should absorb and what I should just, you know, see for myself. But yeah, you do you do have to know. You do have to know when to sit back and listen and take the game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Rather just talking over the people who got the game. Right, like, right. You really do got to sit back and listen because I've, I've learned that from self-experience too. Mm-hmm. Like, when somebody trying to tell you something. What? I'd be, first first be like, no, because. <laughs> right. Come on, I, I come don't want to listen. But yep. then when it happened exactly the way they said, I should have damn listened. Listen. Yep. <laughs> like, it's, it's yep. crazy. And I think, I don't know, I feel like black women, we always come to defense. Like, we just can't help it. Like, even when people, like, in our workplace give us feedback, they're like, oh, well, sister, you're like, well, no, technically, I didn't I mean, there's, do that. There's more than one right. way to do something. Right. <laughs> I mean, it was done. It just it was wasn't done the way that you, you said. Yeah. Right. right. Like, we always got to come back for something. So, I, I just feel like, as a whole, like, um, we all probably need to work on that just a little yeah. bit. I just, and it, it, everything is resulting to back how we were raised. Yep. Like, it's so crazy, like, how your life has to pan out because of what happened in the past and how you move on in the future. And, you know, like you said, always been on defense mode. Yeah. Like, we shouldn't have to always be defensive, but we have to. Like, we, to. we have to talk. To, go, we can talk about what you talked about earlier. Why? Why is it that? Most athletes, black athletes, most black athletes yes. want to date white women. Why do you? you Soon he get on, he leave you for a white girl. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and I think it's because uh, Caucasian women are more submissive. They are. I, I think they are willing to bow down to a man, no matter what, if he's wearing the pants, if he's taking care of home. But I feel like black men don't want to kind of necessarily marry black women because. At this um, day and time, we're like more of the dominant. We take care of the home. We we bring in the paper. It's like we are wearing the pants and we're strong. So it's like now that we've got to that point, we're not gonna you know settle for anything. Yeah. And that's so a threat. they don't like that. Yeah, they're, threat they're real threatened by it. It mm-hmm. is a threat, but I don't think it's just that. I think they're honestly lazy. 
to be honest. Because who wouldn't want somebody to do 50-50? Nobody wants to have to do all the work. And I feel like when you're with a white woman or a Caucasian woman, you would be accepting doing all the work. Because, yeah, they're submissive, but you have to be the provider. They're just going to be there to take care of the children and stuff like that. Right. You know what I mean? And spend your money. Right. But, and spend your you know money. what I mean? But I feel right. like with black women, we are strong. So we definitely want to do our own and have our own. So we meet you right. halfway. You know? And you know, I mm-hmm. think that's what it is. I feel like it's like either I'm going to make all the money and you're going to do exactly what I say. And it's like with black women, it's like I got to make all the money, still give you money. You still gonna take care of home, but I'm still gonna hear your mouth. Right. Like it's like they don't want to, you don't want to hear, you know, what you do bad. And right. I feel like black women especially, like we're gonna tell you what Probably you did, what you didn't right. do, and they're not gonna hear that from a Caucasian woman because they're gonna be quiet. They're not gonna say anything. They're they're soft spoken. It's easier. Right. Yeah. I agree. They want somebody they can run over, and I don't think black women can be, you know, just easily ran over unless we coming from a vulnerable spot like, right. which is unlikely right. for black women Very unlikely. I feel like we um, as black women like since we do have our own background like our own educational background and like everything that we already created and built like an empire within ourselves mm-hmm. I think that's the real threat and it's like oh if she leaves me she still can get her own Very rather as a white woman if she leaves me she don't really have no education like right. that so it's she don't really know how to last on her me. own yeah and they they looking for a woman like a a, a type of uh, woman like that that need them. Right. A black woman may not necessarily need you. Yeah, y'all good because things are working and it's fifty fifty. But if a black woman leaves you today or tomorrow, I'm pretty sure she can stand on her own. But I mean, too. think about how we're raised. We're raised to be independent. We're raised to not depend on a man. Yeah. So you can't it's, really it's behavior. That's right. It's learn a learned behavior. behavior. It follows us for having our own. Because we feel like we have to. Mm-hmm. And it's what we were born upon. Like right. it's what our parents always instilled in us. Right. So wait, let me ask you this. So since we're saying this, as far as black women, I mean black men dating white women, do you feel like they kind of just go for them because they know they can control their mind? They Absolutely. know they're not gonna yes. fight back. I have they know, friends like, who have like I can control to them. White colleges, like predominantly white colleges, and dated black men. It would, no, they would um they would date white women because they're easy. And they would leave high school saying, oh yeah, no, like white girls are just not my thing. But go there and it's just like, well, I mean. Why they not? Do what I say. Yeah, why right. not? They're all around and do whatever. So it's just like, you know. They're not going to speak up. I, but, I and can't it's do it. like a, a man. <laughs> That's also like degrading as a black man too, because you're kind of going to somebody that you know you can use, exactly. right? And you can manipulate. So at the end of the day, I feel like you need to look back at yourself, right? Like the and, easy way out. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it's the easy way out. Black that's man, they definitely want the easy way out of every right. situation, yeah. anything that's happening in life. They want the easy way out. Like mm-hmm. they don't want to work for it. No. They don't want they to be high by through school. Right. A girl probably helped them get through exactly. school. Exactly. Right. It's it saves in homework, uh, all done by females. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And all the, 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 the black men out there that actually do, that are not lazy, that actually get it on their own, they already married. They already right. taken by a, a, a black woman. You but know? you know where the problem starts, right? Their at mom? home? Yeah. I'm about to say, start yeah, at their home. Their moms put this in their head. Yep. They're supposed to be catered to like yep. this. Right. So that's, that's just not that's, all their fault. I can't really fault them completely. That's not letting go of that. Uh, Nipple juice, right? Because <laughs> that's what it is. Girl, that is something serious when it comes to black men. And I feel moms. like at a certain age, it should just be like, as a man, you should feel like I want to have my own. I yeah. want to. I, wanna I don't want to stay with my mom. I don't want to continue to be the same spoiled little brat. Like I feel like women definitely, black women definitely, as far as these black men, they shelter them a little bit too much. Mm-hmm. Instead of teaching them like you can be, you know, sheltering, but also teach them like how they supposed to treat women. If it wasn't given to them, right. show your son, right. teach right. them, teach yeah. them like, tell them like the this right is way. what it's supposed to be done. Mm-hmm. Like this is how you treat your mom. This is how you treat females. Right. Like I feel like a lot of women don't do that because because they don't know. Mm-hmm. But still, like, kind of passing on the game to the younger generation, we drop the ball with it. I still feel like that's kind of hard, though, when you're growing up in a single-parent household. Because mm-hmm. it's like now you're forcing the moms to become mom and dad, you know? Right. So it's kind of difficult from definitely a woman's aspect because how am I supposed to treat my son to be a man? You know what and I mean? And I'm not a man myself. Exactly. You could just... I don't know. Tell Some them what you know from figuring it out, okay? <laughs> right. Okay? You got to tell them something. Figuring it out. Uh, it's important, man. It's important. Like you said, it really starts at home. I don't know. Do you feel like black women, um, like you were saying, black women 
do you feel like they don't say anything to black men because they just want to have somebody for comfort? Or do you feel like we don't say anything because we don't want to blow it up? Or why, why do you think we kind of sweep it under the rug when we know our man is lazy? Uh, I think with black women, and I'm going to say this for uh, self-experience, when, you, when you're dealing with someone, they kind of get, they get used to, I'm sorry, they get used to you taking care of them, if you get what I'm saying. Like, once a person get used to you doing it, it becomes norm for you because it's out of the norm. norm. You might get mad, you might get angry. I'm going to complain to my girl about mm-hmm. it. I'm going to complain about my mom. Right, I'm not still mm-hmm. going to do it. Yeah. But you're used to it, but that's something we have to break as well because mm-hmm. it needs to be 50 50, like she said. It needs to be 50 yeah. 50. You know, take half of the bills. I pay the utilities, you pay the rent, mm-hmm. or something like that. It needs right. to be responsibilities on both ends. And it's not like that these days. Everything is just one side, and then the blame is just placed on one person mm-hmm. when it's two people inside of a relationship. Mm-hmm. It takes two. It definitely takes two. It does. Also, I feel like that's where everything is going like nowadays, because I feel like definitely in the past, it was more so the man is the dominant person in the household, so he is the one. He's the provider. He's the one who's supposed to be taking care of all the major necessities and stuff like that. But again, it's, it's a new day and age. So yeah. women definitely should pick up the slack. And definitely, I still feel like men should be called out for it, though. Yeah. I, that's why I feel like I belong in the generation before <laughs> this generation. Yes, I really because wish Because the men before born. this generation still open the door, yes. right. still right. cut the grass. Best believe in our generation, I have seen women out there cutting the grass, which I think is crazy. I have seen women taking out the trash. Mind you, the generation before ain't no women touching no trash. I have something to say about that. So I was at work, and I was told, you know, they all think I'm like, oh, princessy, because I don't take out garbage. If there are four other men on my shift, why should I have to take out trash? And they're like, oh, right, but they're like, oh, but women want equal rights, want equality. Okay, is that not, I don't feel like I should have to yeah. touch trash. Not saying that I won't. It's not like it's something I won't do. Yes, at home, if I have to take out the garbage, I will do that. Mm-hmm. But if there's a man present, why should I have to? I don't know what happened, what era, like, I mean, it's not rich. what era, but what <laughs> speed bump we hit in life to where <laughs> people start getting in their minds like, well, she can take out the trash. Like, that's what, and I, I worked at Six Flags for probably like over five or six years, and I don't mind taking out the trash. Like, I was born, I, I was raised to be independent as well, but if it's a guy, take out the trash. But yeah. their whole thought process is, why can't you take out the trash? You could do the same thing I'm doing. No, like, take out the trash. Yeah. It's not It's, it's not a task for I was to raised do. like that. Yeah. Like, I was that. raised that I did dishes, and I would, you know, clean up and stuff like that, but definitely right. little brothers, little cousins, they they're doing the, the trash, trash. Yeah. they're cutting the grass, they just, they're... The oh, more manly I have never right. right. in my life touched nobody's grass. Never. I'm never now, I'm taking out trash the trash. Yes. Man I was a, my mom was a single parent. It was right. just me and her. Yes, I took out the trash. But like, like I said, if I'm with a man, like that's a man's job. Right, right. Even like in me, like at my job, like I told you, I'm a teacher. Uh, certain <laughs> stuff I make the little boys do. That's a man's job. Right. That is not for a young lady to touch. Right, I, I'm adamant on moving it. objects. We, yeah. Our job is to garden, yes. not to cut the grass. <laughs> we are gardeners. gardeners. Yes. Gardeners, mm-hmm. we plant pretty flowers, yep. and you are supposed to cut the grass. <laughs> like, why should we be out there with a, a whole yeah. gas and everything right. in the grass? That's not no, right. One thing I do like, you know, when I have my little boy or whatever, he will pump my gas for me. Right. I like that. You know, okay. that's kind of, yes. I know that's kind of like old, but like, I like it. Though. No, I like that. I go pay you pump. Yeah. Or, uh, I just go pay you pay it In the winter. In the winter. Okay. In the winter. Yes. So cold. So cold. I like when they go downstairs and warm up the car. Yes. Go inside and warm the car before we go to work. I love Lord. that. It's just the fact that you're thinking about simple stuff mm-hmm. like that. Like, simple stuff like that matters. Like, yeah. It's you know, a little thing. Especially when I don't have to ask. If yeah. I don't have to ask, I love it even more. Like, you pull right. up to the gas station, they, they be unlocking it, get out. Yeah, like, no. yeah. Or when, you, when you're when you getting ready, to, because we're so independent, when you're getting ready to get out the car and go pay for it, and they just like, what, what you, you doing? doing? Are you getting yeah. mad at right. me? You're going to get mad at me? you going to touch the door. Like, why are you going to open that door for you? What are you doing? Just cuss me out because I'm about to do something. That's your job. I'm going to let you be the man, but... I think that's another problem. We don't know how to recognize 
when they trying to be right. Right, when men are trying to be men. So it's, I don't know, it's kind of crazy. It is crazy. It's like we got pros and cons. You know, we just... Sometimes you I have to be we quiet strong and minded. Yeah, right. But again, we're raised to be that yeah, way. We right. have to be that way. We won't survive in this economy yeah. if we're not. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we'll easily be taken over. Try to run over us. Yeah. And we got to yeah. stand up and speak out. Yeah. I, that's why I say I just reiterate like it's a learned behavior. Like we taught that from all my, we learned that from our mothers, right. and now that's just how we are. And yeah. when we have kids, they're gonna that's pick up what we, and it's just gonna be a, a generational type of thing. It's just learned behavior. But you would think that. you would think they would be more understanding because I'm pretty sure most of the guys who complain about us being outspoken, their mom is exactly the same, same way. way. You meet the mom, you be like, girl. Girl, she works with me. You <laughs> right, right. Mom, she, she y'all be chopping it up like your friends. Right. Like, oh, your mother act just like we best friends now. Bye. Right. Mm -hmm. It's the Beat Break Morning Show with Sean Garvey and the crew.